Yeah, you can get sure. started now. Okay. How many people? Uh, how do I know? How many 49, people are online? Uh, there there are, are forty-nine now. On the right side, there are people the and uh, the number of chats. On the right oh. side. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Basket Park okay. Session Eight. Uh, I'm feeling a bit nostalgic right now. Actually, uh, listening to the bird calls uh, behind the Nareshas in Nareshas Garden. That's what even I have been listening to for the last couple of days. I feel I'm being transported back in time to Bangalore, Bangalore before it became Bangalore, and with its, its advent of traffic menace, etc. So we we are honored to have Mr. Naresh Narasimhan, who's a renowned architect, urbanist, and creative entrepreneur. He is the principal architect of Venkatramanan Associates, the co-founder of MOD Institute, an international collective of urban designers, researchers, and curators. He has been a part of the Earth to Earth Bangalore Agenda Task Force, chairman of NUMA Bangalore Club, and a regular advisor to Earth. On to you, Nish. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. This is a topic that is uh, close Sorry. to my heart. Sorry, just one second. Uh, a couple of house rules, please. Please yeah. keep all your audios and videos muted till the presentation is over. If you have any queries, please post it on the chat window so that we can raise it later on. Okay. Can I start? Yes. Yeah. So um, I'll speak mostly in English. I assume that there is a uh, what do you call it polyglot audience out there. I don't know how many of you know Canada also. So but I'll speak mostly in English so that it's easy for everybody. So all right. Uh, do uh, I, I I know the chat windows on mute. I'm at the uh, talking windows on mute, but. Uh, very few people actually know that Bangalore is one of the oldest cities in India. Uh, Bangalore today, in the, as of today, it is 484, three years old, going on 484, which doesn't sound like a lot, except that when you consider that it is older than Bombay, it is older than Chennai, and it is older than Calcutta. Though probably the two cities, three cities older than Bangalore in India are Delhi, Jaipur, and um, of course, Varanasi is the oldest city in the world. But Bangalore is quite an old city, and it was always set up as a town. It was never a. A lot of people think people are used to saying Bangalore is an overgrown village. Actually, it's incorrect. Bangalore is an overgrown town. It was always set up as a town in the year 1537. Uh, what people don't realize is that uh, in 1537, when you tell a date like that, people don't again connect it to, oh, is there some time long ago kind of thing. And you should remember that Babur, the founder of the Mughal Empire, came to Bang came to India only in 1527, 10 years before Bangalore was, Bangalore was founded. Right? So it's, it's a very old place and it was a feudatory kingdom under the, it was a feudatory uh, province under the Vijayanagar kings. It was founded by Kempe Gauda the first in this in this particular location. So a lot of lot of uh, theories are there saying why why is Bangalore called Bangalore? Why is Bangalore called Bangalore? And let me go to the next slide. Hello. How do you do that? One second, huh? some misbehavior. Right. So there are many uh, theories as to the etymology of the name Bangalore. One is, says it comes from the Benga tree, which we now know in Kannada as the Honge Mara, which is all, way, all over the place. But in Hale Kannada, it is called Benga. And it could be Bengaluru. And of course, there is this apocryphal, completely false story that it is uh, where some king was wandering around Veera Ballala the second or something, a Hoysala king, and he didn't have any food. And some old woman gave him whatever she had, a soup made of boiled beans. And that is Bendakalu in Kannada, and which is completely false. 
and uh, also there is a theory that it could be called Billy Kalluru, which is again in uh, the white granite that you see everywhere, which is called Billy Kalluru, white stone, and it could be that also. But there are the inscriptions in the Begur, uh, in the town called Begur on the way to Electronic City, which uses the word Bangalavaravuru. There are many, which means the town of the guardians. But the, probably the most, uh, what do you call it, correct story is that Kempegowda the first uh, probably found, married a girl from a small hamlet near Yalahanka called Hale Bengaluru. Why that was called Bengaluru, nobody knows. It was called Hale Bengaluru, which means old Bengaluru. And probably as a wedding gift or something or to please his young wife at that time, called this place Bengaluru. Right? Or New Bangalore, whatever it is. Right? But Bangalore's history goes back much, much earlier. And uh, in North Bangalore, there are prehistoric burial sites uh, uh, before the Common Era. So the, you know, around the, uh, they have been dated around the uh, first millennium before the Common Era. And you can see these kind of dolmens. You know, many of you are wondering what are these dolmens. Dolmens and menhirs are what uh, Asterix and Obelix keep throwing. I mean, Obelix keeps throwing at other people. And the funny thing is that these Ab Obelixes and Asterixes, I'm sorry, so not Asterixes, these dolmens and these kind of burial sites are actually common across the world. And it sometimes you wonder whether there was a uh, um, civilization which was across the entire planet at that time. Stonehenge is there. In England, there are many uh, such uh, burial sites all over Europe and all over, also in South America, and curiously also in North Bangalore near Dorbalapur, and also near uh, Banargata Forest. Right, and Bangalore also has an unusual rock formation, uh, which is three thousand million years old, which is almost like you know when the Earth was being formed. Peninsula, this kind of igneous rock from the volcanic eruption. This is the famous rock near Lalbagh. And there is actually, it's a, it's a worldwide geological monument. It's one of the oldest pieces of rock ever known to man. And there is a little signboard saying that no, very few people have seen it. But these are, you can make out the way the rock is, you can see in the image that it is like a bubbling of uh, magma from the, love, the volcanic eruption which has condensed over time and which has become hard granite. Bangalore actually sits on a bed of extremely hard stone and which pops up here and there now. Yeah, you can see it here and there. And the tower you see there is the later version of the tower which was originally created by Kempegowda as a watchtower. It didn't look like this. I'll show you what it actually looked like. This was rebuilt later about a couple of hundred years, hundred years ago in the Vijayanagar style. But the original... Uh, tower was very different looking. This is the uh, backstory of Bangalore. Around the 8th century, there is this Nageshwara temple which was built in this town called Begur. If you go on uh, Hosur Road, and uh, just after you cross, uh, you uh, pass the silk board, infamous silk board flyover, about three few kilometers ahead, you will get a right turn to this village called Begur. You have to you go under the flyover, under the uh, expressway. And you will find this temple. And in this temple, uh, this was discovered uh, very long ago. They built in the year 860 common, of the common era. And you will find these two stones, which are now being removed and uh, put in the Bangalore Museum. There is one of them is still there in the uh, temple. And th the first time you see that word in Kannada, and it says Bangalore, Kalagadol, Bhutanasetti, Satam. It means in the Battle of Bangalore, a chap called Bhutanasetti, Shetty died. Right? And you can see the, it's written there in Kannada. I've tried to make a translation. And that is the Battle of Bangalore on the left, which is immortalized in stone. We don't know exactly what was the battle, but that's the first time the word Bangalore is historically visible. Uh, a few uh, friends of mine, 
notably Uday and Vinay and a few others, a few have others. now gone around all over Bangalore and uh, found all these inscription stones in all the old temples and villages. All of them, most of them abandoned. And they are postulating that the Bangalore is even older than that. It's more than a thousand years old. And they have found uh, stones near Hebbal and all that, which are around the 4th or 5th century. Um, are dated back to the 4th, 5th century. And they're still putting together a cohesive story on how this town has actually been in existence for close to more than, say, 1800 years. Bangalore also has a Chola history, very few people know. The Chola Empire actually extended um, up to the city of Bangalore. And many of the locations that you see, uh, which, are, which we all are very familiar with, are actually Chola uh, outposts of the Chola Empire around the 11th and 10th and 11th centuries. The word Yalahanka, which all of you know, is actually a Kannada uh, version of the Tamil word called Ilait Pakkam, right? which became Yalahanka. And um, even the words like Tavarakere, which is actually Tamarakere, which is the, 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 the lake of the lotuses which has now become Tavarakere. And also you find, um, of course, the famous Dombalur, which is actually Dombaluru, which is again, a, and you will find this temple there, de dedicated to the Chokkanatha Swami, which is built in the, probably one of the oldest temples in this region, with the Tamil inscription saying that Rajendra Chola gave some contribution to build this temple. And many few, we have passed this on the airport road, old airport road many times, but very few have stopped to go inside and check it out. But now, slowly people are now finding out where it is. And I would suggest that any of you are interested, that when you go on old airport road, just when Dumblur begins, after the army encampment, there is a left turn and there is a board which says Chokanatha Swami Temple. Please go and have a look at it. It's in quite good shape still. This was another uh, uh, temple about a thousand years old in, uh, called Chanaraya Swami Temple. This is on the way to the new airport near this town called Chikajala, which you will cross. You know, nowadays nobody sees it because you fly on the flyover on top and you don't notice what is on the ground below. One of the reasons I dislike flyovers because you never notice the neighborhood. You're just zipping from one corner to the other. And the National Highways Authority of India didn't think it was important enough and actually broke the front wall. It was actually a stone fort. And what you see in front is the debris of the fort and behind that is a beautiful tank and a small temple uh, dedicated to this uh, temple. And, and then it came under the Hoysala dynasty under the King Vishnu Vardhan. Right. Kempegoda, the first who was the founder of Bangalore uh, was a feudatory, uh, as I said. But he was he lived from the year 1510 to 1570 of the common era. And the Vijayanagar Empire, of course, was, all of you know that it was there between for almost, it, people don't realize that the Vijayanagar Empire lasted longer than the Mughal Empire and the British rule in India, almost to close to 350 years. And in Yalahanka, you still find this temple, which was built by Kempegoda, And all this, uh, there are some Kannada inscriptions also there in that place, and that was actually where he ruled from Yalahanka Nadu Prabhu. And from there, he one day he came to Bangalore and set it up as a, as a, as a separate town. Right? This is what Yalahanka's central of, center of Yalahanka still looks like. Again, most of us pass by this place and we know of it as a place, but nobody bothers to go inside and see what is actually there. Kempegoda is an unusual character. He was a feudatory, which means that he was a subservient uh, chieftain under the Vijayanagar kings, who were the overall suzerains of the sovereigns of the region. But he was actually, a, for some time, he fell into the bag. He tried to print his own money, is the story. And the Vijayanagar kings got a little upset with him and chucked him into, kept him under as we all know what we call it nowadays as you know self isolation I was forced isolation quarantine for some time in vijayanagar and he's supposed to have got the idea of building all these tanks and creating a new city 
by watching Vijayanagar under construction itself. And uh, he is responsible for many uh, tanks as well as uh, temples which were built in this, in what we know as current Bangalore. The, what you see on the left is an illustration made in 1792, okay, of the Gavi Ganga Adhireshwara temple in Gavipuram, near behind the bull temple in uh, Basangudi. And the temple is still looks, it's a cave temple which goes underground and with these strange looking signs, stone uh, symbols. And you, the picture on the right is what the temple looks like right now. It has an unusual feature that on Makara Sankranti day, on 15th, uh, on 15th uh, January, the sun shines through the portal, the entrance portal, all the way down into the cave and uh, illuminates the idol, uh, the linga which is there at the bottom of the cave. It's an unusual sight to see. And it happens without fail year upon year. This is also a temple uh, built by... Uh, um, built by Kempegowda, which is one of the earliest pot known photographs. Many of you might have seen it, called the Bull Temple in uh, Basangudi, opposite the DMS College. And uh, this is what it looked like more than 100 years ago. It's a very old photograph. And what you'll see unusual about all these photographs is even those days they had electricity. You can see the electric pole here. And the electric electricity was there about 100 years ago, even in this place. And that's what the bull is. The legend is that Bangalore actually is an unusual city for many reasons. It is the largest city in the world not situated next to a natural feature. It has no sea, it has no river, it has no lake, it has no major river, it has no lake, it has no mountain. It's actually bang in the middle of a plateau the Deccan Plateau, which and it has no natural boundaries at all. And it's actually a confluence of two trade routes, which was one was west to east and the other was north to south. I just take a break for one minute. I forgot to get a glass of water. I'll be back in one second. <laughs> Hi, Sandhya. Can we have the photo of uh, presenter? Uh, Naresh, maybe. Okay. Hello. We can hear you. Yeah, I'm back. Yeah, you can hear me. Is somebody trying to, one of you trying to call me because there's somebody calling me endlessly? No, no. Sandhya? No, I don't think any of us are. Doing. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. continuously getting interrupted by a phone call. Let me put that. None, of, none of us. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. So, okay. Yeah. Up till now, everything is fine, right? So, right. Let me continue. So, um, yeah, so it's an unusual city in the sense that uh, many many historians have wondered and many geographers have wondered why did they choose to put up city in the middle of nowhere without even an access to a source of water. So the water was created by creating bunds across shallow areas when, when it was used to collect rainwater. There are actually people don't, don't realize that there are no lakes in natural lakes in Bangalore. Every single one is a uh, artificial tank created for the sole purpose of drinking water as well as water for all other needs. Right? And it is a, and there is only one little river. A, I won't call it a full-size river. It's more like a stream, which starts apparently from two parts. One is uh, under this, supposed to be from the feet of this bull. And the other theory is that there is another Pushkarni in Maleshwaram behind the Kadu Maleshwara temple on the uh, 12th cross. And there is another bull, small bull there, uh, temple there, which was excavated a few years ago when they tried to 
expand the temple on the hill and they found this entire uh, tank with this bull and water dripping from its mouth and two streams come and join and the, the stream is called Vrishabhavati. Unfortunately, now it has become full of sewage and uh, it has been rain. The people call it Vishabhavati, which is the poison, the, the poison river. Now. And we are all, a lot of us are trying to get involved in trying to get that river to flow again. The good part is that we have been monitoring the effect of the uh, uh, isolation and the shutdown of all the industries in Bangalore. The good news is that as of yesterday, the Vrishabhavati has changed from dark black color to light green color in watercolor. So hopefully that's all it takes to fix India's problem. About two weeks to one, two months of shutting down everything will bring our evolution, ecology back to normal. Even the Yamuna apparently is flowing clear as of yesterday. This was one of the largest tanks created by uh, uh, Kempegowda. This is a very old vintage photograph of Alsur Lake. And what you can see there is one of the towers. The Kempegowda, there are these little granite outcrops all around Bangalore. And you can see the painting on the right. This is all captured. These paintings are all around 1791 or so by a guy called James Hunter. And this is a photograph about from about 1880 uh, or so. And you see the little thing there on the little chimney there and a little hut there, which is with all that still exists. All that is under MEG control now, Madras Engineering Group, the Army control. And that's actually the water works. The first attempt to create a, they used to extract water from this like purify it and supply it to. What you see behind there is Alsur village. They used to supply it to Alsur from there and to also to the Army encampment, which is on this side. And these little watchtowers, this was the actual shape of the tower, not what you see on the Lalbagh rock. This is actually, there's an even older version than this. I'll show you that also. And the symbol of Bangalore is actually that watchtower. The symbol of the BBMP is actually the watchtower built by Kempegowda. The original, uh, the, this thing. right? And these watchtowers, because Bangalore had no natural boundaries, these lakes and their overflow systems, the marshes in between the lakes, ensured that nobody could bring in heavy artillery or you know heavy carts because it would get stuck in the marsh. And only certain points in the uh, between the lakes were people allowed to enter the uh, enter Bangalore. And these watchtowers are strategically placed at those high points to warn of any impending invasion and any impending attacks on the city. This is another beautiful temple built by Kempegowda. Originally, it was an even older temple. It was completely renovated and made into a larger temple by Kempegowda called Someshwara. This is in Alsur. Again, a very old picture of the city. And a very old photograph of the Someshwara temple. This temple is also in good shape. A little while ago, uh, uh, our current chief minister found out that uh, the Kalyani, the tank of the temple had been encroached in his last time when he was chief minister and they actually broke it overnight all the encroachment and they found this entire tank and the water came out of it as though nothing had ever happened. The water was lying under it all this while and they, now they are making this tank into a proper Kalyani up behind the to the northeast. If you go on the metro line uh, towards Alsur, you can see this uh, from the top if you look down. And you can actually go there also if you want. There's a Kalyani uh, which has now come back to life behind the Alsur temple. Theresa right? May visited this temple, right? Huh? What was Theresa what was May. That? Theresa May huh? visited this temple. Theresa May. Yeah, yeah. Theresa the former... May. Yeah, yeah. Theresa May, the former Prime Minister of Great Britain, visited this temple. Because she apparently. I think the British have some strange connection. Uh, Charles is taking homeopathic medicine. Theresa May goes to some. Bangalore and the British Empire, I think, are never going to let go of each other, I think, for some reason. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so this is why they, they broke. There were a lot of houses and encroachment on top of that. Overnight, they broke it. Sometimes superstition can be a good thing also. So he was told that if it doesn't, the, this tank doesn't come back, he's not going to survive in office. So overnight, they removed the encroachment. 
okay okay this was the original so bangalore uh, i will show you some maps also a little later on but this was the old uh, fourth wall of bangalore there was a bangalore was surrounded by two forts one around the town and one around the uh, where the palace was where tipu's palace is and this was the site of the big battle people don't recognize this place anymore it is called halsur gate except for its name there is a halsur gate police station exactly where that gate where you can see that wooden gate which was there and halsur gate police station is opposite the bbmp at hudson circle that was the road going towards the halsur village and that was called halsur gate and this is what it looked like when the british first came to attack it in 1791 right and I, now i'll show you how the city looked like long long ago this is again a photograph taken in the 1920s this is sampangi tank which is now we were the site of the kantirava stadium we have systematically destroyed all the tanks and the water ecology of the city and uh, and we have not understood the connection between nature and this tank uh, civilization it's an unusual civilization based on artificial tanks and what you see behind is kaban park and you see that the tank is not just a tank which is just for looking at and make for for beautiful just to make it look beautiful it is also a place where people are washing clothes of course the, the detergent must have been natural detergent they are not putting any aerial or surf into it and you also see this pavilion there which is probably a, a changing room for uh, people to who want to swim in the lake and on the right where you see the bun is now vital malaya road where that hospital and that school is i don't know how many of you are old bangaloreans here but this is a site which used to and the tank when it dried out in the summer when the when the water evaporated in the summer was used as a playground was used as a circus you can see the board of the grand circus there and then can anybody recognize uh, this uh, this photograph this is actually subhash nagar bus terminus this was the largest this was the lake which was supplying water to the old city called dharmabudi lake and what you see behind is subedar chatram road with all the cinema theaters in the back here and you can see that the grand circus board is still there but the rainy season has started and all these kids must be probably fishing or ha having fun there as the water filled up again this was actually breached and completely destroyed after some time and they built a bus stand and now there is a bus stand for and there is also a big metro interchange there now okay so let me come to the making of the pete so we will be doing on time yeah no problem right so this was the ordinance map which was made by the british to attack bangalore and what you see here is the oldest known map of bangalore which is 1791 and that was the old town and what i showed you just now alsur gate was here can you see my arrow there is it visible murli yes 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 yes, 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 yes. yes. and you see this uh, fellow here this tank here it was called siddhi kathe this is where city market is now okay and there is a no there was a stone fort behind it i'll explain that later but bangalore is an unusual place because it has actually a physical point where it started and we will be having a we were planning a big festival in on the kempegowda's birthday in june with all this corona tamasha let us see that where my arrow points is where avenue road meets dotpet main road and that is where bangalore starts that is where the, that is actually kilometer zero of bangalore and what you see here this is called delhi this is the alanka gate and that is where state bank of mysore still stands right and the big lake i showed you was somewhere here on my left and all these arrow lines that you see all these fine lines and all these curved lines are all battery positions to bombard the fort from by the british which is very clear before they attacked anywhere they first made a map and you can see that the old peta of bangalore it's written there peta bangalore written there and this is that venugopala swami temple which is still there and they put a cannon there and started firing and these are all the ballistic lines can you see the curved lines 
these are all the boomerang banging the fort and finally they hit the fort at this point somewhere here and broke it and the whole fort was surrounded by a thorny hedge made out of prickly pear uh, plants so that people and it was a ditch and now this road is now the what you see here is silver jubilee park road and what you see here where my arrow is flying is kempegowda road right now and this is platform road on the left right so kempegowda is supposed to have seen in 1537 he was supposed to have seen this is a story which is actually repeating in many cultures so you can take it as apocryphal or anecdotal of a hare chasing his hounds his hunting dogs right and he called it uh, gandu bhumi which is heroic ground and decided this is this will be a place and he goes and asks his mother what shall i do first to get this going and his mother replied people the very few people know that kempegowda's family are all uh, they are actually uh, morosu vakaligas who come from kanchipuram who were chased away from his great grandfather was chased away from kanchipuram by the because the pallava king there had eyes on the great grandfather's daughter so overnight they left and came and settled down somewhere near devanalli and then moved to elanka later and he went and asked his mother what shall i do first she said keragalum katt uh, maragalum ned which means build the lakes build the tanks and plant the trees a simple piece of advice i think we should tell all our current people also don't screw up the water bodies and plant more trees we are still saying the same thing after 500 years right that's what it looked like the city it had this whole stone you know it had this fort all around the city made of mud because the, the vijayanagar empire would not allow the uh, ekampa got to build a stone fort thinking that it will become too strong they allowed him to only to build it out of mud and this is what it looked like he brought in almost 20 uh, trades right and what you see here was he asked four bullocks with uh, to with four plows to go on these four pathways and in these four direction north south east and west and where they went and stopped was the end of the where was the uh, boundary of the city And so it's a it's a so Yalanka Gate on the north, Anekal Gate is where Avenue Road begins near the city market. Sonte Kopa Gate is where Bale Pet Majestic Theatre is, and Halsuru Gate is opposite the BBMP. This is how it looked, and you can see all the other petes um, which are there inside the city. The Aki Pete had rice, Upar Pete, Ganigar Pete, Balap Balapu Pete, Nagar Pete. Chick pet. Each one had a different, different. Uh, uh, what do you call? Tigular pet. Where the horticulture is. Then uh, each one had a different community living there, and a lot of temples were there in that those areas. Right. That's one of the old pictures from. This is around 1850, 1855. How the town may have looked at that time. This is Avenue Road, probably. Right, and this is a little later picture, around the 1800s, 1880 or so. This is how the town probably. This is probably one of the town streets inside the Pete. This is how the city looked at that time. Quite rare pictures, not easily usually seen by people. Right, and then to the south of the town, they also built a fort for the king to live. And what you see here is Tipu Sultan's palace at that point and a parade ground. and this big white space which you see here is now bangalore medical college this part of the fort is the oldest part of bangalore and it's called golra pete gollas are traditionally people who supply milk and if you go there it's an unusual place where everybody lives on top and in the parking area there are cows in the ground floor there are all cows there even now and the only part of the old stone fort that survives is this little curved bit i don't know whether you can make out in my image where my arrow is only that part remains most of the other things was dismantled this part of the moat has become kalasi palayam main road and that part again has become albert victor road right and there, there's an old stone fort all around completely dismantled completely gone now and this is the tank this is called sunakal kere which is now completely filled in 
and nothing remains of it now. Right? So this is the sequence how it happened. The imagination of the city was quite large. You can see all the tanks which were built, all the blue tanks and how they were interconnected. Here, this was connected. This is Alsur tank here. And then you'll see all the other tanks and this was the old city in the middle. Right? And there was also a it also the city was surrounded by a bound hedge made. It was a hedge all around the city made out of thorny uh, brambles. And then the Chikka Devaraya Odayar, who took over from Kempegoda, from Kempegoda dynasty, after Kempegoda II and the Kempegoda the third, there was a third Kempegoda also. And the Chikka Devaraja Odayar to, uh, took, uh, defeated him and took over the kingdom and built another fort at this point. Right? And that's the detailed that's map detailed. of the fort. Hello? Yeah? Hello? Did somebody say something? Uh, I don't think so. Please carry on. Yeah. No, I heard some noise saying something. Anyway, this is the old, uh, one of the beautifully drawn map of the old city. And uh, then in 1760, Hyder Ali, who was the head of the army of uh, the Wadayar kings, the Wadayar guy was not very strong at that time, the guy who took over, he deposed him, put him in the, and made himself into a regent. And he appointed this guy called Ibrahim Khan, who was the Kiladar, which means the head of the fort, and rebuilt the mud. It was a mud fort till then, and rebuilt the fort. By the time the Vijayanagar Empire had collapsed, and Hyder Ali got it rebuilt in stone all around like that. And it had two gates. One was the Delhi Gate here, and this was the Mysore Gate here. And these were two watchtowers, which had no gates. It had only two gates, the fort. And it was built by a, designed by a French engineer in a double, it was called a double fort battlement, it's called. And it's a very odd design because what happens is to get into this fort is not very easy at all. You have to come in, take a left turn, go right, take a right turn, come in, go left turn, come inside. Only then can you come into the town. And it's all made, made in, in, you know, not in a straight line so that an army cannot rush it. And they have, uh, it's an interesting fort, the design of the fort itself. And you can see that the parade ground, this was the palace of the king here. And this was the parade ground at this point. This part of the palace still survives. This is Tipu's palace, what you see here. Right? This was Mr. Hyder Ali. And that's what the fort looked like. We stood at Avenue Road. You see that double fort. You know, it's, There's a fort here. This is the gate. And then you have to go inside. And this part, this curved wall and this part survives little bit. Most of the other forts, the whole big thing is completely gone. Doesn't exist anymore. Completely dismantled. And this little dome you see there, that tomb is still there. That is the tomb of the guy who built the fort, Ibrahim Khan. Kiladar's tomb. Okay. This is the oldest known map of Bangalore. It was made completely by visual sight by a British spy. Right? And obviously, it's, uh, it's got the shape, but he's got nothing else. And he sort of, you know, by, by made by a spy and, and was given to Cornwallis to be, a, to be able to mount an attack onto the fort. Well, that's what it looked like. That's where Avenue Road entrance and this was the fort wall and that was the Avenue Road entrance at that time. And Hyder Ali also had a great fascination for great gardens. Right? And he imported all the cypress trees from Lebanon. And this is the first map, first drawing that we know of Lalbagh. And you can see this is that Lalbagh, what I showed in the beginning. This is what the tower looked like, the watchtower. And this is the rock of Lalbagh. And below the rock was this garden which was made. And you can also see Sampangi Ramnagar, the settlement outside the fort. And in the distance, you can see the fort itself. Again, a made, painting made by Claude Martin. At, uh, this is about again 1792 or so. Okay, Lalbagh was completed by Tipu Sultan, the phase one of it. And there was a big tank also which was created there to feed the water. People don't realize in this day and age, sometimes I also wonder how did they even, I mean, they are not able to 
with all the modern communication tools and this thing and all that, that we have, we are not able to still understand how to manage a big country like ours. And you see, the kingdom of Tipu Sultan was that large, the grey patch. And if you lay it on a map of current India, you can see that most of Karnataka, a bit of Tamil Nadu, quite a bit, about half of Tamil Nadu, a quarter of Andhra Pradesh, and probably quarter of Telling, half of Telangana by now, and about half of Kerala. And that point, what you see there is Sultan Bateri, which is the gap, it's called the Palgat Gap, in which uh, the rain clouds come into peninsular India every year. And that was Mr. Tipu Sultan himself right on top. That was the size of his empire, quite a huge uh, area to administer, actually. And the red dot you see is where Bangalore is. Bangalore was not important for him. His kingdom was, his empire was ruled, he ruled from Sri Rangapatna, which is roughly where my arrow is right now. Right. And this is what the Bangalore fort looked like. You can see the flag of Tipu Sultan flying uh, with the tiger, the green flag with the tiger face on it. That was the flag of Tipu Sultan and this was the gate, one of the gates of the old fort. <laughs> and that's an actual photograph before it was demolished. Right. This is what it looked like. This is all around 1860s. You can see people standing on top of the fort. Here. And this is the, the, the stone fort was surrounded by a water moat completely all around. And that's what, that is all that survives of it today. I don't know how many of you have seen it. I would strongly suggest that you go and have a look at it if you haven't seen it. Only this small bit, less than 5% of it survives today. Okay. And you see this old painting in 1792 of the gate of the fort. And if you look at it, you keep your eye on those arches, right? And you'll see that. And this is what the Lalbag rock looked like at that time, about 100 years back. That was what the tower actually looked like, the watchtower on top of the Lalbag rock. This is, a, this is a fictional painting. This is supposed to be the attack on Bangalore. But some of the artists seem to have got it all wrong. It, the town looks more like Mavalli or Malavalli or something. It doesn't supposed to. It, it says the attack of Bangalore, but it's not really. That picture in the back is not really Bangalore. Right? Okay. This is how the, the the how the city looked around that time. Again, there are different. Many people have made lots of the paintings of the old fort and the city and the encampment in front. Right. Uh, you remember the Alsur gate that I showed and that little bull that was sitting there in the uh, left of the image? This was the attack on the Delhi gate, uh, sorry, Alsur gate. And the, the chap called Colonel Moorhouse was killed in that attack. And this is a painting of that day when, uh, in 1792, when it was attacked. Just a few days ago, actually. March 21st, 1791, sorry, not 1792. They broke this wall here with cannon. And you can say March 21st, 17, just a few days ago, in 300, 250 years ago. And this arch is what the elephant was going through. I showed that elephant picture a little while ago. And then in 1799, Wellesley attacked again Sri Rangapatna. And this shows that the depth, the depth of Tipu Sultan, and he was killed in battle, and by treachery, of course, standard Indian story. He was um, uh, somebody opened the gates, and the British came inside and took over the place. So Bangalore's next story begins, which is now colonial Bangalore, which is now the British didn't uh, for some time were hanging around from 1799. Till about 1806, they were hanging around Sri Rangapatna. And curiously, because there is a report saying that there are too many mosquitoes there. You know, and they said, let's move to another place. Let's go make Bangalore the center of our administrative thing. And they moved to the city. You still see the old city there and the old fort there. And this is the bound hedge. And all the lines that you see here are all the lakes around the city and the marshes. No, this made sure that we could enter Bangalore only from here. You could enter it only from there. You could enter it only from here. This is Alsur Lake. 
here. You can see Alzur Lake here. You could only enter it like that and so on. Most of it, and you see, and they also, then they decided that why not uh, um, I need to just take a call for one second. Just give me one minute. Huh? Sure. Sandhya, the talk is going to be for one and a half hours or uh, one hour and then question and answer sessions. How are we uh, targeting it? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah I one hour uh, is the target, but uh, we leave it to Nadesh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very interesting. I expect people are interested in listening as long as yeah. he is prepared to talk. <laughs> okay. I certainly Good. am. Sorry. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, I'm back. Yes, please. Hello. Continue. Yeah. yeah, you may continue. So the, yeah, then the British, what they did was they decided that they want their own area. And in 1850, 50s, they created the 1807, they came to Bangalore. In 1820, they decided that we want our own cantonment and told the king at that time they put the king back on the throne as a puppet and they said that we want our own administrative area and you see the pink line which is now the bangalore cantonment people don't realize it but they created this huge apartheid you see this is before kaban park was created kaban park is somewhere there and you see that is mg road okay and that is parade ground that's why it's, it was originally called south parade and these are all the army quarters which were built. And this pink line was the administrative area of the British, which was completely controlled by the British at that time. And you see, this is Brigade Road. It went to the Brigade Ground. That is why it was called Brigade Road. And this is Shivaji Nagar, where they kept all their native people whom they bought from Chennai. Yeah. And you can make out a lot of other small, small villages there. This, so they also created a race course for themselves, which is now the Agram track, which is now was used by the army for various other things. This is also tank, what you can see here. It was almost double the size it is now. But it's now completely gone. Right? And this corner that you see is where double road begins. This is Sampangi tank, which is what I showed a little while ago. And that is where Kantirava Stadium is. And this is this is that this is the point which they broke, which is also gate, and where the, that uh, tank ends, Hudson Circle, is where the cantonment ended. And this part was uh, people from, and you see also it's a map which shows how dominance, colonial dominance. This map, the old city which was in the middle of the map has now been pushed to the left of the map, and the British map has now come to the British area has come to the center of this map. And the fort is still there, as you can see, the stone fort. And that was actually used by the British as their administrative thing till they built this place. You also see that Kaban Park, Attara Kacheri, nothing is visible here. Okay. And then again in 1914, I'll speed up a little bit now. There are lots of other slides. Yet we're running out of time also, I think. And you see that now the Kaban Park has been created in 1780. And that is almost like an apartheid park to keep the natives away from the old town, from the British guys, <laughs> completely. And this was the tank was the separating this thing. So you have to take a pass if you want to go to this side. And by 6 o'clock, there was a curfew. If you're caught on this side, you'll be chucked into jail for the night. You had to go back to the old town at that time. And you see how big also tank was and how big Miller's tank, many of you know on Queen's Road now doesn't exist. Where the Congress office is and all that is there. That's where it is. Oh, oh, one second. It's creating a power problem. So just hold on. Eh? The power is conking out. I have to move the computer to another location. Hold on. Sure, no, sure. Battery is not
Hello. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah we can hear you. We one, can hear you. There's a huge racket in the background. One minute. Mm. One second, one second. Yeah, back on. I got the power socket. Just one second. I charge it fully, but the battery seems to have out. Okay, fine. All right. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Good, good, good. We can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what the city looked like. You also notice that the black line on top of the image. Bangalore also got a train in 1870. So you see the this is the train track and city station you can see on the left. You see Dharmapudi tank is still there in the 1914. This is a map from 1914. And Richmond town has been formed, you can see. And Sunakkal tank, what you see there is the uh, Murli's favorite place, BMTC bus stand on double road. Right? That's the, the tank was filled in to make that bus stand. So even now when it rains, it floods like mad over there. I have many, many favorite places in yeah. Bangalore. Sunakkal is your BMTC headquarters. Anyway, so that's what you see there. And this is, you see the city is already quite well formed. What you see as cantonment is the Shivaji Nagar area and Cleveland town, the Cox town and all is still not formed fully. Right? These are all post-plague, uh, this thing. And no Jayanagar, no Basangudi. Lalba, you can see on the bottom, you can see the tank, a little bit of it. And you can also see the British have taken over Lalba and made it into a more classical garden. And you can see that the fort is starting to disappear. Can you see that? The fort is, the edge wall is starting to break. Okay. Continue. What happened? Hello. Huh? One second, the presentation itself disappeared. Oh. What happened? One second, one second. Are you going to be blaming my other favorite target, Bescom? No, no, no. Something has gone wrong. One second. Hold on. One second. Hold on. Hello? The entire presentation disappeared. One second. No, I think it's a forced rest. After one uh -huh. hour. It is a no, uh, rest. They want After to... one restart that no, it's not much longer another 10 minutes it'll be done one second one second hold on i'd see i'd see it's here don't worry no, 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 keep, huh? keep going i mean we are, i mean it's very interesting for all the audience i should think and uh, uh doesn't matter don't don't be limited by time you know, you said she said yes, one sir. hour, so I sort of. No, that's okay. I mean, uh, we would love to continue. If okay, you're... okay. Yeah, Even I'm if just showing pictures. So. Okay, so yeah, we are back here. So these are the, these are some of the early photographs of the city. This is how the cantonment looked like. And to uh, hey, what is this doing, man? Okay, what you see here, the tower there is Saint Mary's Church in Shivaji Nagar. And you see the little bit there that is St. Andrew's Church on Coburn, on Coburn Road, that red church. It's called St. Andrew's Kirk, actually. It's a Scottish church. And all this was what the cantonment of the city, British cantonment, looked like. This is probably somewhere near Mosque Road or so. Right? And what you see here, those little tower-like things, that is the, probably this area is Russell Market. And that's what Brigade Road looked like. No? This building curiously still stands. If you go to Brigade Road, that's still there, that Brigade Road corner. Most of the rest of it is gone. Nothing is, none of these exist. 
But you can see that Bangalore is an unusual place because it got electricity in 1906, earlier than most Asian countries. And the full street light electric, electric, electricity was completely available from Kolar gold fields. It was originally created to take gold out of Kolar gold fields, but one line was diverted to Bangalore. And you can see the pictures of the electric poles even on those days. And that is what commercial street looked like. And you can see cycling was very important even in those days. So nowadays everybody is saying cycling, cycling. You can see the little girl also is riding a bicycle on the left. And all the richer people used to use this pony cart. It was, this, this was the precursor of the jatka. What we call jatka, the cycle rickshaw with a pulled by a, uh, a couple of horses that time. Okay, And you can see all the uh, British ladies happily cycling around the place. Right. And you can see the Abbe Faria wearing a Cistercian robe standing in front of the St. Mary's Basilica. And this is again an old picture of St. Patrick's Church. You cannot even see this view. If, it's the, if you stood at the end of Brigade Road those days, this is what you would see. Saint Pat but now this entire front of it is completely obscured by shops and some commercial complex called St. Patrick's Complex. You can't even see the cathedral behind it. This is the view from the top of you know the public utility building. Much of MG Road before the infamous metro comes. This is parade ground. There used to be a restaurant, and this is Kaveri Arts and Crafts, this building here on the bottom. And that is Brigade Road. Here. And you can see Church Street there. That is Church Street. Right? Of those days. And the little embankment which we all used to walk around on MG Road when we were kids. And this is from a restaurant called Top Cappy on top of Public Utility Building. This photograph is not very old. It's about the early 70s, mid 70s. And Top Cappy was owned by Amjad Khan and Sunil Lola at that time. It was the number one hotspot of the city. And this is again a photograph from about 1920s or so of MG Road. And that building is Kaveri Arts and Crafts. And that's the entrance to Brigade Road. And this is MG Road. This building doesn't exist. Fortunately, when they were breaking it, I found, I went and bought all these doors and they now exist in my office. I've used them in my office as the doors to my upstairs. Upstairs, I completely reused them. And this bar is the bar which I had my first illegal beer at the age of 17. It was called Green's Bar at this time. It doesn't exist anymore. Broken down completely. It was a billiards parlor run by one cantankerous character and also a bar next to it called the Green's Bar. This was early churches. This church still exists on the corner of Cabin Road and, uh, I'm sorry, MG Road and Cabin Road, the Wesleyan Church. East Parade, it is called. And this was the old GPO, which is now replaced by that quite ugly building on the corner of uh, Vidhanavidi. This was what the old building looked like. I don't know why they broke it at all. It looked quite nice at that point. And this is how St. Mark's Church it was built, burnt down, rebuilt. Again, it collapsed and again it was rebuilt with the dome. Three times it was redone. You know, the earliest churches in Bangalore, St. Mark's Cathedral on MG Road. And this was the, how the race course looked, the new race course, which is there. Many people in the group, I don't know whether you're all familiar with the movie called Gone with the Wind, which had an unusual actress called Vivian Leigh. Vivian Leigh actually grew up in Bangalore and there's a beautiful, I don't know whether I have a photograph of her. There's a photograph of her as a young girl reading a book in the race course in Bangalore. Ah, this is how St. Mark's Cathedral, so the old church, it was not a cathedral before. This is, people cannot recognize this at all. But this is, at this point, is the biggest booth shop in Bangalore now. The Jewel City Paragon building is here. Tonic book booth shop is here. And that was the old church, St. Mark's Church, was built in 1808. Right? And it burned down and then it was redone. And this, there's a circle here. And what you, the photograph is taken from Queen's Road. And on our left here is the Chinnasamy Cricket Stadium. Here. And straight ahead, you see this little gazebo. That is where Boring Institute now stands. And this gazebo was dismantled and it was shifted into Kaban Park many years ago. This is again an unusual photograph. 
you can see kaban park and you can see the attara kacheri building in the distance and where this photograph is taken from is where vidhan sauda now stands now this is the site of the vidhan sauda itself in 1890 right? and again this is a unusual photograph again from where behind queen victoria statue and you can see st mark's cathedral standing there and this gulmohar in bloom and this little fellow on the right here this building is now kaban park police station which still stands exactly it's still exactly like that 1938 it says the photograph the painting this is how lal bag looked in 1860 very classical garden classically laid out garden british style garden and this was the entrance to the city market at that time that the city market had a whole bunch of sheds all this doesn't exist anymore and uh, as of news yesterday the city market is going to be shut down and moved to bomma sandra or electronic city or somewhere and they're going to redo that city market area i hope it doesn't get grabbed by real estate sharks and it's brought back to life in some other interesting way like they've done with covent garden in england or something that's how city market looked from the air this is now this building still exists in city market and this was the this area was cleared after the british that is avenue road going up and only part that survives of city market is this part and the back part that arch you see that arch still there this was made after a guy called hogs market in calcutta made named after a guy called stuart hog all the produce will be brought here an auction and each corn each quadrangle is that the grains will be here vegetables will be here this thing will be here and the meat market was separately kept here meat and fish were here and what you see this bunch of trees here on the left is now the chickpet metro station and all these buildings were demolished and then all this was also demolished and an ugly building was built there in the mid 90s and you see the little shadow there you see that pot when i point like that can you all see what i'm pointing to yes sir, sure sure yeah well, with yes, my yes. arrow you see that little yes yes that was the first electric that. pole yeah that was the first electric pole in asia in 1906 and doesn't exist anymore they demo demolished that also fortunately before they demolished it we found out and we it was fallen down there and we took it and rebuilt it in it's there inside the bbmp corporation uh, offices we have rebuilt it re erected it and it's still working so when the electricity first came to bangalore it was used to illuminate the city market the city market had only one floor at that time a second floor was added much later the first buildings to be eliminated with electricity around 1928 or 1930 or so this was what was there before russell market it was before russell market behind russell market is another market called new market it was called for the cantonment britishers and this is st mary's basilica and this road for some reason doesn't exist and this looks like this road goes to mg road but the road doesn't exist anymore you can also see the uh, two towers of the, uh, the the mosque which is next behind commercial street you can see these two that these are the towers of the mosque that are there this tower still exists and in front of then they built a bigger market here called the russell market here this was how the new market looked at that time and you can see other church spires in the background st john's church in the far away and that's the kind rest of the cantonment you can see and then later on this was the electric pole that was chosen this russell market was built as a modern market built in this indo saracenic style as they called it with influences from arabic uh, architecture and then of course i thought this slide was important for today uh, the last time we had isolation enforced isolation and you know all of us sticking around at home in 1898 there was a huge plague and because of the plague and they had to vacate the central city which was a mess which was mostly in that the old akipete chikpete area and they created basangudi and malleswaram which was the was was called modern sanitary layouts which could have initially it had conservancy lanes in between all the plots to collect the 
uh, human filth, but later sewage systems were brought in by Vishwasharaya and added. And this was the plague camp. So I think all of you who are in quarantine and isolation will be a little happier nowadays that the quality of where you are put up is slightly better than this. You have to be stuck in this. You are, you are, if you had the plague or you are suspected of having the plague, you would be stuck in these kind of uh, isolated isolation camps which were built in three, four places in Bangalore. One of them, curiously, was right behind the Chinmaya temple in Indranagar, in one place called BM Kaval. That was the, one of the locations of the plague camps of Bangalore. Right. And this is how Miller's tank and the Bangalore also got pipe water supply in the 1930s from on the right, this Hesargatta reservoir. And this was Miller's tank. And Miller's road was like that. And there's a big tank there which is now filled up. And where Alliance Francaise and all these other uh, play, play, uh, Congress offices is also there. This is how Alsur Lake looked in 1902. You can see it was created completely by this. Uh, completely made, mod modernized by this Louis Boring, after whom Boring Institute was made. And it obviously had boating facilities and all that stuff. And James Cameron also created, this is Lalbag Lake. Still in very good shape as of, this is a recent photograph. And also this chap called Sankey, after whom Sankey Tank is named. He created in 1882 this tank to hold the water coming from Hesargatta. And what you drive on, on the top here, this, is, this area is Palace Orchards. And what you drive on here, on the Bund, is going to Maleshwaram. Okay. So, but what is happening is in today's, in today's world, people have forgotten what is nostalgia. Is it? I'm just used a clever statement there saying that when nostalgia started disappearing, nobody remembers what it used to be. Everybody asks, where is that old fort that you keep showing? This is the old city. You can make out the old Pete. This is the railway station. That is Kaban Park. And that is Alsur Gate here. That is BBMP there. Kantirwa Stadium where Sampi Gate tank used to be there. And there's this city market there, sitting right there. And everybody asks, where is that fort disappeared? And you see this little grid pattern here. That is Chamaraj Pet here. And that is where it was. The old fort. It was completely destroyed and the stones were reused to build town hall and so on. Right. So Bangalore, just the center of Bangalore, not even the larger area, had about 280 lakes in 1960. In 1978, they decided that to land sharks at that time decided that a uh, lot of people decided that malaria is a big problem and malaria is getting bred in these lakes. Let's fill them all up. And that's all that's left today. Less than 80 lakes is there in the larger Bangalore area. And in the center of the city, hardly less than five or six are there. Can you see how many were there and everything is gone? Right? You can also see how Bangalore has changed in these pictures. MG Road in 1950 with all these Studi Bakers and De Soto cars standing here. And the Bund. And that's how it looked even in 1960. In 1980, also the Bund was there. And you can see the cars only are more modern and they're changing. That is Andrew's building, still one of the few remaining buildings on MG Road. And that's how it looks like now. I think if you take a photograph now, there won't be any traffic. At least we can remember what the city looked like. One of the biggest mistakes we made was to allow that metro to be built above ground on MG Road. We should have gone underground all the way beyond Alsu and come out of ground only near uh, Indranagar. And this is also a picture of Hosur Road in the 1930. Please keep your eye on the electric pole here. This electric pole is still, you know, this is how Hosur Road looked. Okay. Now it looks like this electric pole is still there. But you see, well, and the trees are now replaced with this concrete mess. And that's how it looks now under. Nowadays, most of us zoom on top of the flyover. Nobody notices what goes on below it. Okay. This is how city market looked in the 1970s even. And it had a garden in front. It had this little fountain with little water coming out of the mouth of all these lions and all that. This Bata shop is the only one which still exists. Everything else has changed. 
Now it looks like this royal mess. Now it's all because of this plague, nobody is there now. So Bangalore has moved from being a pensioner's paradise to a garden city to a, you know, then it, in the 80s, it became 80s and 90s, it became liquid city full of pubs. Then, of course, in the 90s, it became boom and boards like this. What you see, half a house is for sale, half a house, the, they, won't, they won't give it, but they'll only make money out of putting, allowing some dish to come on top. And then we had Silicon City where everywhere there was cyber, this thing. And then we call, finally, we Bangalore, from Bangalore, it became fully bungled up and became Bangalore. And you still see that little monkey top being repeated as some nostalgic element. Monkey top as a window. Right? We don't know how to look after the old armory of Tipu Sultan in Kalasi Palya is all falling apart. Unfortunately, nobody cares about it. And hopefully now we have been trying to tell the government to look after it, but nobody is paying attention. And now we propose, I'll end the presentation now with we presented a a plan to the government saying that on one road in Bangalore, which is Avenue Road and Palace Road, there are more than 30 uh, heritage buildings occupied by government offices. We asked them to vacate all those government offices and put them in another building and create a new road called Swarna Valaya, which means golden area, golden uh, precinct. And this is the old, this is the old fort city market and the other end is the palace which was built by so there is a palace at this end and there is the bangalore palace at the other end and this is palace road completely okay it's five almost five kilometers long and at one end it looks like this this is tipu's palace this is what it looked like when the british found it and still in very good shape even now and the other end was this king's palace what palace and, and if you look at it there are in one road alone there are 27 heritage buildings and we've been telling the government now please somehow make remove all these uh, offices and make that into a heritage district of the city and the black portion that i've shown completely to call it as a heritage district that nobody can mess around with it and even now few days ago in this carbon park some the high court wanted to build some eight story building there's no end to the assault on this palace so i'll just quickly cycle through these are all the heritage buildings one of the oldest schools of bangalore on the southern edge. This is the old temple, which was actually endowed by Tipu Sultan, Venkat Ramana Swami Temple. Fort High School has This is the center of Bangalore. This is the condition it is in. Now, this, there were four markers there like this, but only two of them remain now. And that's also in very bad shape. There's also a small church on Avenue Road called the Rice Memorial Church, built in 1916. This is the Daily Memorial Hall, which announces and holds the Mythic Society, fantastic library and collection of old uh, books and maps. This this is now Central College, which has now become Bangalore. South America and acclimatized in these gardens. This is Carlton House. You don't want to go there. You'll go if you are getting into trouble. This is where the CID sits. Balab Brewery, which they again tried to break a few years ago. All of us protested and somehow saved it, which is now the headquarters of where the COVID-19 outbreak is being monitored. This is the war room on Palace Road. The National Gallery of Modern Art, which was in bad shape and which uh, my firm, Mekatamnan Associates, created the National Gallery of Modern Art out of that restored the building and heritage is not only tangible buildings and tangible lakes and tangible trees but also the festivals of bangalore which is actually today 
this, this is why I wanted to show this slide. The Karaga festival, only five people will be allowed to. So it's one of the two oldest festivals of Bangalore, which happens on April 8th, which is actually today. No, today is 8th, isn't it? So today is when the fe huge festival is had happens all today night long. Today is the 7th or 8th, right? What is it? I forgot. 5th. Today is 5th. Yeah, so the festival happens from 31st to 8th. And the festival, there was a band this year, but they have now announced today that five people will be allowed to take the uh, Karaga and go to the temple. This is the Dharmaraya Swami temple in Tigalar Pet. This is the Karaga being carried on the head, head of the this thing. And that is the route it takes through the old city. It's an unusual festival because it also goes into the Darga of the Stavakal Mastan Shah, one of the few syncretic festivals where a Hindu festival is allowed to go into that and actually do uh, Deeparadhane to the Darga. It, these are the locations of it. Right? And uh, what I showed you here, the old, this, which is called Uppinir in Akunte, the clay is taken from here and carried, and all that remains of that lake is this. This lake is still, that the old indoor stadium is there. That little lake, little bit of water is still there. And you can see that the festival is illuminated and the karga is carried and it, the uh, darga's uh, guardians on the left wait for this uh, darga to be the, this uh, idol, this, this karga to be carried inside and it goes up, makes a pradakshina around the tomb of the darga of this saint and comes out and finally ends here. The, Bangalore also has a heritage in terms of uh, there are a lot of these wrestling kusti uh, pits near this old city. And also, we have uh, other festivals like Katlekai uh, Parishe, uh, which happened just finished a little while ago. And also, in uh, Pupalaki festival in Alsur, uh, the Someshara temple. And of course, every you can see it all over the city today that we also have a fantastic. Uh, cereal flowering, uh, which is right now at its height. I don't know how many of you are able to go out of your homes, but you'll see all this Tababuya rosia, you see all these yellow flower, golden trumpet flowers, you see all these Gulmohar, Queen's flower, then the tulip, African tulip, and the Honge Mara is in full bloom, and the Jacaranda will come immediately after. And you see that this flower culture of Bangalore is reflected every year. This is the old city market, flower market. And you'll see that the flowers keep changing as the seasons change. Thank you very much. I've come to the end of the presentation. And I would end this slide with how Vidhan Sauda looked when I was when in 1970. No offenses. You could sit on the steps every evening, every weekend. It used to be the public space where you could go and sit on the steps and eat Kalakai and celebrate Bangalore as it was. Thank you very much. Thank you, Naresh, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, there are a couple of uh, questions. Yeah. Would you like to take them? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Does anybody want to go or uh, shall I just read out? Uh, quickly, quickly, uh, Sandhya, I just wanted to ask uh, Naresh. Uh, yeah. He showed the uh, Bui Temple. And yeah. uh, mentioned Rishabh Havati. Uh, yeah. There was a there was a busman and a kere, and we used to our house was just a few. Uh, yards and uh, and, uh, and uh, there was that was the birthplace of uh, Rishabh Havati. Now that, we that, no no the, actually the Rishabh Havati's original source is mythically is supposed to come from under the bull, but there is actually a physical source behind the Kadu Maleshwara temple in Maleshwaram, there is a Pushkarni there, and there is another Rishabha sitting there. From the mouth of the bull, there is a continuous stream of water. So there are two streams, one coming from Basungudi and one coming from Maleshwaram, which joins uh, together and then becomes a Rishabhavati. Perfect, perfect. And uh, when I, uh, when I, when I uh, this thing, uh, traced it on uh, old uh, maps and other things, uh, this from uh, Bull Temple, it, uh, the water would come and collect 
at Kempa Budi Kere, which is also correct. Kempa Budi Kere was made by Kempe Goda, and uh, Kempe Goda himself is named after his family deity, which was called Kempa Ma. It was his parents prayed to Kempa Ma, and he created that Kempa Budi Kere as a homage to her also. His, his, their family deity of the Kempa Goda clan is a goddess called Kempa Ma in Kempa Budi Kere. It joins the oh. Kempa Budi Kere and then becomes a Vrishabhavati river. Yes. yes. Uh, yeah, just a quick uh, question. The second stream you're talking about from Maleshwaram, is that yeah. uh, near, uh, below that Nandi, uh, Bhogi Nandishwara, I think, no? Uh, correct, correct. Like, Not Bhogi Nand. Bhogi Nandishwara is in Nandi Hills. This is a Nandi sorry. behind the Kadu Maleshwara temple on 15th cross. Yeah. That was There's a red temple there. That's, yeah. That was, uh, I mean, discovered only a few years ago, right? Yeah, yeah. They excavated and they suddenly found this huge Kalyani there and this little bull with water coming out of its mouth continuously. And from there it flows all the way. It flows south, southwards towards Mysore Road. All of it is now full of sewage, so that's a bit of a problem. But uh, that's how it is. We are trying to, there's a huge uh, public movement called Namma Nadi Vrishabhavati, which is trying to bring it back to life. There's one uh, viewer question Who was ruling when the British sieged Bangalore? Tipu Sultan, I explained that, no, in seven, from 1761 to 1799, Tipu Sultan was killed in the Third Anglo-Mysore War in 1799 in Sri Rangapatna. And then in 1799, the British took over. Bangalore was under British Tipu Sultan, but his capital was not Bangalore, his capital was Sri Rangapatna. Bangalore was only, he was only keeping it as a, uh, another part of his kingdom, that's all. Sir, this is Ganesh and I have one question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this British moved the headquarters from Kiranga Padma to here to Bangalore because it's in a high elevation and a good climate. Yeah. Yeah. They also want, you no, know, they actually sent out a team. One guy called Blakiston was sent out, uh, the, uh, the, was sent out to, they didn't want to be in Kiranga Padma, but they felt there was too many mosquitoes there. And, they didn't, they didn't think it was healthy enough. They wanted another place. So they went for, initially, they tried to choose between Channapatna and Bangalore. And finally, he chose Bangalore. Ganesh Nagesh here. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, they moved in to Bangalore in 1806. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this uh, you mentioned that out, out of 280 tanks, uh, many of them were removed in the name of malaria. Yeah, yeah. malaria a, control. Yeah, malaria control. There is a uh, interesting side note that the tonic water also was invented to fight malaria because quinine was used Correct. to you know as a, as a preventive measure, right? Correct. Gin and, and tonic. Uh, they used to have a gin and tonic in the evening to stop malaria. <laughs> Yes, so I think uh, those who wanted the lakes to be there went for gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> no, but gin and tonic was not it was invented in North India because fellows used to sit in the evening on their verandas and uh, used to get bitten by mosquitoes to stop that they did that. Right, gin and right. tonic was not invented in Bangalore. Right, right. Will, it was only no. tonic first. Correct. Naresh, will it help against Corona? Which one? Gin and tonic? Gin no, chloroquine. Yeah. <laughs> now, the tonic that you get in uh, uh, nowadays is very low, this thing. You need chloroquine is a, and hydrochloroquine is derived from quinine. Both the drugs that come from the quinine. But now it is synthetic. Now, it, it comes from the bark of a tree called Scona. Okay, Naresh, another question pertaining to, pertaining to the heritage. Now, you said about you know the the walls of the fort being demolished from uh, from within, not really using, 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 nowadays, it's not synthetic, it doesn't come from um, trees anymore. 
but nobody knows no, where no, they no. work. Uh, Narish, my question pertaining to uh, heritage again. You yes. said about you know the Britishers, uh, you know, using the guns to knock down the walls from within. Is that correct? I mean, is why would they do that? What do you mean walls from within? No, you showed the 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 what is that? The cannon positions within the fort walls, right? Yeah, there are two forts in Bangalore, not one. Okay, one is a bigger fort and one is a smaller fort. The or, inside the stone fort. So they broke the mud wall of the town fort, positioned the cannon there, and then hammered the stone fort. Uh, and why was that? It was to the south of the fort. To, because the king and all the main army was holed up inside the main fort. No, The town was more for the people. The soldiers were all inside the main stone fort. Yeah, it, it, it did look like they were bombarded, uh, they, uh, the cannon uh, lines were uh, shown as if originating from inside the fort. Um, you know, I inside the mud fort, inside the Pete fort. The Pete had a separate fort. Right. But it was made of mud, it was not made of stone. Okay, what was the idea in knocking that down? Which one? They knocked that also down. After the British knocked both of it down. Why do you mm. see after cannon was invented, forts right. became useless, man. Forts as oh. a defense mechanism is useless because you can bombard it with the uh, cannonballs and break it. Forts only are used if you have bows and arrows and spears. Okay. Then they the guns came into the picture and that that is enough to cannon, take cannon, on the uh... cannon. Once no, cannon no. Okay. came, that was the end of fort okay. design. Worldwide cannon. all okay. forts stopped at that time. Okay. Uh, only, Lal have... Kila, only Lal Kila and was built by Shah Jahan to show off. It was not really Narayan, useful. One, one uh, uh, sports person. Yeah. So I wanted to know, ball badminton was famous during British period. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Uh, have you seen any grounds like that ball badminton game played in cantonment area? Because they brought it from yeah. Tanjavur to... No, I am not aware of. No, I am not aware of that. You are not heard. Okay, okay, okay. Naresh, uh, Naresh you... I have one question. So, uh, in yeah. in uh, the history of Bangalore, I yeah. find it surprising to note that uh, there was no mention of Belandur Lake. No, no. I, I I mean I can go on with this presentation for another two hours. There is Belandur was a definitely part of the. It is the. It was the penultimate lake in the ecosystem, in the lake flow system. It was used as a, in the British times itself, it was used as a plane, a sea, sea plane, uh, uh, air, like for, for, for landing and taking off of, of seaplanes. And there was a seaplane repair area there, a refueling yard, where HAL now stands. HAL itself is a British time company. It was called Hindustan Aircraft Limited. It was created by this guy called Walchen with the, in the 1930s and they were happily using that i have photographs of seaplanes and all on belandur tank i have another presentation on the tanks of bangalore i can go on on this top what i mean i don't know how many of you all are on my uh, on our uh, we have a page called uh, bangalore photos from a bygone age bygone bangalore if you google bygone bangalore on facebook i i don't know how many of you are on facebook but whoever is bygone bangalore there is a page on which has about uh, 35,000 members. A page which was created by CN Kumar and administered by all of us, me and Mansoor and Kiran and all that. We all help uh, to do that. And you can see that uh, there are more than 30,000 pictures of Bangalore on any topic you can think of. And it also is a community of diaspora of the entire Bangalore. You know, the, all the people who migrated from here. Lots of them are also there on the... We had a lot of Anglo-Indians in Bangalore who have all left and gone away to... Uh, who are all in the cantonment area who have gone away to Australia and England. Many of them are there on the uh, page also. So any of you would like to join it, please go to Bygone Bangalore. Look, There are a lot of copycat sites. So look for the ones which, which has more than 35,000 members. That's the one you need to join. And I'll be happy to be interested. And then, but you have to answer a couple of questions. So in the question, you just say you listen to my talk so that I know immediately 
because we get a lot of characters trying to spam us so we've just put in two questions and a small gateway to get into that uh, page and it has many uh -huh. many pictures you can search for we were the gentleman who asked me the ball badminton question there may be an answer on that if you post a question there people will respond to you immediately oh yes, uh, thank, thank you thank you it's very th thank you it's very interesting um, you mentioned about uh, lakes of bangalore it will be very interesting to listen to you on another uh, occasion of practical on the yeah. bangalore's uh, uh, carries yeah i have a separate presentation on how the what was the lake system it is a very unusual place because nowhere else in the world is a entire civilization based on tanks so bangalore is unusual for that most yes, other cities will be always next to some water water body marish bangalore i seems to be a destination for outsiders uh, for a very long time for example yeah yeah it is uh, always was cosmopolitan yeah there was a cantonment there means all the soldiers would be drawn from the across the country right yeah yeah then there's always the, a cosmopolitan city yeah then came the you know the uh, union undertaking i mean the undertaking the government undertakings like the, you know bel and uh, iti and all that you know so they brought in a lot of outside talent actually in those days right i mean of course i mean yeah, uh, one two century back yeah. i actually have like, another presentation on the people of bangalore so yeah. another day another day <laughs> so my point is yeah, that when, go to go to youtube go yeah. to youtube and google my name you'll find half a dozen presentations there also on all kinds of topics oh so my point was that with so much of influx the uh, you know the the land of the to change right i mean so so how how it would change i mean the people also would change for example earlier the oti and diwali were not so prominent because it's not a south indian you know uh, festival both of them but now with the north yeah. indian being here in it era basically the holi and uh, you know even, uh, other people and all that basically have uh, now found the uh, more prominence yeah, yeah. yeah i think i think people will be surprised to know people will be surprised mm. to know in 1880 the official language of bangalore was kannada tamil and marathi you know that marathi there's a huge maratha influence because Uh, Shahji Bonsle. I, I mean, I can go, as I said, this conversation can go on for a long time. I just cut it short because even this exceeded by some twenty minutes. But uh, Shahji Bonsle, the father of Shiva, Shivaji was married in Bangalore in the Kadu Maleshwara Temple to Jijabai. Actually, Shivaji was grow, brought up in Bangalore, and then he was sent up to his father was the Jagir holder. Under the uh, Aurangzeb's Ma Bahmani Sultan, he was the ruler. And the Shahji Bonsle's father used to live in the uh, Half Avenue Road. In one small, there used to be a palace called Ratna Vilas Palace. He used to live in that. Sandhya, Sandhya, can we take the last question, please? Yeah. And, uh, can we have a last question, please? Question, please. Uh, Mr. Narish, uh, this is uh, Praveen Shirali. Uh, I had a question for you. Uh, by the way, yeah. thanks for the lovely presentation. Uh, I've also seen all of your past uh, videos on YouTube uh, and the TED Talks, and I was part of the Bygone Era. So lovely work there. Uh, so my uh, question is a little different. So uh, with all the history that we have, what is it? Yeah. Uh, and, and, the, and the fact that you have interacted and uh, presented this in so many places. Uh, what do you think yeah. is the best way for us to collate uh, history on Bangalore in one place? Uh, like, do, do you, I remember you had the project where uh, there would be a physical map of Bangalore at a location, and people could actually yeah, yeah. see. That is starting to happen now. Actually, okay. because of this, uh, that the, the government has finally agreed in principle to create that, and then we shall now see how, after this COVID business goes down, how to get this going, and you know, uh, let's okay. see how to make it happen. Okay. So, okay. So do you do you do you see a uh, you having a sort of a, a map of Bangalore with the with an overlay of all the heritage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that will happen. All all that is planned. Again, as I said, I'll show it in another time and another place. Will it'll take a long time to explain how that is to be done? Okay. Great. All right. Thank you so much, Sandhya. Thanks a lot. Sandhya, can I? Thank you, sir. Thank you. 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 Th
Naresh, uh, good morning and good afternoon. It is yeah, splendid. You. We did not know how the time passed. Many of us did not, did not remember the date. Now we don't remember the time. Fantastic okay, uh, presentation. We really enjoyed it. But one Thank point you. is that you start yeah. the evolution of Bangalore up yeah. to Silicon City. I would like to extend it beyond. Silicon City became a garbage city. Garbage yeah. City sure. became a no road city. Yeah. After that, it became a fire city. Yeah. In the whole of Belandur is the only lake that got lit up. So it's called the fire city. And my boss. No, I didn't want to talk about all the depressing parts, that's all. Sorry, I no, no, it's a jet. I said I didn't want to talk about all the depressing parts. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it is really excellent. We would like to hear okay. you again something little different for more than one and a half hours. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a so lot, much. Sandhya. I would like to... I think there are two more options he has given. Uh, one is on people, right? Uh, and then yeah, the, the lake. <laughs> Thanks to Wagner. No lakes problem. may be more interesting for all of us because we know lakes are missing, but we do we know how, how they missed it. How many were there earlier and how many are available now? Yeah. Right, Sandhya? Yes, sir. All the best. Thank you. Talk, uh, Naresh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Naresh, before you, you, before, before you go, Naresh, do you, do you yes. have anything on uh, Sri Ranga Patna as well? 